Improving Sales Using Early Indicators, Episode 117. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel. And in the last few episodes, we've been going into the financials of your business. We've been talking about specifically Profit First, but the whole premise around Profit First is to have a system and a plan around your cash flow, your cash management of your business. And I want to continue the conversation as it comes to measuring numbers that are relevant for your law firm. So uh, I wanted to talk about sales because if you don't have control of the money coming in, the money going out is uh, it solves its own problem, right? If you if you don't have cash available, you can't spend money, so you can't have a broken system. We can only we only need to fix the system once you have a problem where your money that's coming in is going right back out. So I want to focus this episode on sales and sales numbers so that we can then continue the conversation around how to then manage your cash, how, what numbers to pay attention to, things like that. So uh, we're going to be continuing to talk about this over the next couple of weeks, but today we're going to focus on sales. Now, we're not going to focus on sales tactics. We can uh, definitely dive into that in the future. But what we are going to focus on is understanding your numbers. And this could be a really quick episode. We'll see if if we can make this easy to understand without uh, you being able to see the visualization of, uh, you know, formulas and numbers. But let's take let's let's start with the journey that somebody takes from when they find out about your law firm until they become a client, right? Uh, This process would look different for every firm for the different types of, of, you know, tactics that you have. But let's say that you have a digital marketing initiative. So essentially you have an ad that's running on social that is, or in Google pay-per-click, one or the other, that is leading somebody to a offer to sign up for something, whether it's a webinar, whether it's to download a free guide, whether it's to uh, sign up for a free uh, class that you that you teach, whatever, whatever it is, there, there's a process they take to provide their information, they get something in return for that, and then you have a process after that, whether it's an email sequence or an immediate uh, uh, call to action to book a call with you, then you drive them to book a call with you, uh, they have that phone call, you determine whether uh, now, maybe some people then go to an in-person consult. Maybe some people that phone call is the consult. Uh, it's not really relevant necessarily to our discussion, except that you need to know what every step is in your sales process. And if you're not taking everybody through the same exact process, then that's probably the first place you need to start is to uh, make the process the same uniform uniformly or do you you need a uniform process across the board so that you can accurately measure what's going on so that you could tweak it so you could see where where it's breaking down where the problems are so uh, you have this process where you take them through the then you have the sales call maybe the in-person consult you propose your services they either buy on the spot they sign up on the spot or they go to the 
uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll get back to you. And then you've got to follow up with them, right? That, so that's one scenario, one type of uh, intake or sales process. And by the way, um, I, there's like this taboo thing in the legal industry about calling it sales. I'm going to call it sales. You're going to hear me, hear me say sales all the time. At the end of the day, you are selling your services to somebody else. You are trying to get them to become your client. You're trying to get them to become your customer. So you want their money and you want to provide a service for them. That is sales. So we're not going to skirt around and we're going to, you know, call it intake and all of that. Um, you can call it what you want. I'm going to call it sales. So um, we're going to dive into this process and why it's so important to understand the numbers and how that translates back to you being able to really control the faucet of sales uh, coming in, of dollars coming in to your law firm. Now, let's just give one more example of a sales funnel, right? Um, so maybe you're running a TV commercial, or maybe you you have billboards around town, uh, or maybe you're running a radio spot. So you're not on online digital media, right? But you have placements in these various places, which is driving somebody to a phone call. So the lead comes in to your firm as a phone call from a t responding to a TV advertisement, from responding to a radio advertisement, from responding to a billboard. You then... Uh, schedule a consult or you, you know, uh, schedule an information session or schedule an in-person uh, uh, meeting with that person. And then you go through the similar process from that stage, like we outlined earlier for your digital marketing funnel. So, and I'm calling it funnel because uh, that's the marketing speak of this process where you, you take people through this. It's, it's a filtration process, right? If you think of a funnel, you have a lot of people start at the top, and then by the time you get to the bottom, you have very few people coming out of the bottom. So you're losing people along the way. And it's important to visualize it that way because that's going to have a direct impact in the numbers we're going to discuss. Now, I'm going to take a brief moment here to interrupt this conversation. We're going to get right back to it. But I just want to share with you, uh, I go through, um, I open up eight slots every month for a free coaching session. Uh, and right now we've, we've got some open spots in August. So July is, is pretty much booked. If you happen to find some time on my calendar, great. But I'm pretty sure that July is done. Uh, we're now looking at August where we have some uh, spots open. If you are looking to get some help and guidance on what might be keeping you stuck? What might be preventing you from reaching the goals that you want? Um, we offer a free coaching session, uh, just a few of them every month. So uh, I think we open eight slots a month and um, August is open right now. All you got to do is go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. And um, you can you basically answer a number of questions, choose the time slot that works for you, and boom, you're booked, you're on my calendar. Um, there's, you know, there's no upfront fee. It's an absolutely free, we call it the law firm expansion free coaching session. And um, I can tell you that uh, people walk away invigorated, clarified. They really get clarity on that call as to what is going on and what's keeping them from moving forward. Uh, so if this is something that would be helpful to you, definitely go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. And in case you're on the treadmill right now or you're out riding a bike or you're running or you're in the shower, any of those things, don't worry. The link is in the show notes. It's directly below this episode, or you can go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash 117. Every episode is, you know, profitwithlaw.com forward slash episode number will take you directly to the show notes. So this is episode 117. Just go to forward slash 117 and you will get uh, the links to anything that I refer to in this episode. So now back to our, our programming today. So you've got this sales funnel, you've got this, this um, 
uh, uh, p- path that you take people on. Now, what happens is, is that at every step of the way, there's a certain percentage of people who reach that step that move on to the next step. So let's let's say you're you're in this billboard example, right? Or you're in this digital marketing example. It doesn't matter where we start, but let's say there's a hundred people who see the billboard, or there's a hundred people who see the ad online. And then let's say that there's, um, I'm going to actually even move it one step forward, right? So let's say there's a hundred people who take action on your ad. There's a hundred people who actually click on the ad, or there's a hundred people actually look at your billboard, pick up the phone and call your law firm, right? So at that point, the phone's going to ring and you have a conversation with that person. And the digital marketing funnel, it's even more complex because there's a bunch of steps before the phone call. Um, so let's take the easy one first. So let's take the billboard, radio ad, TV commercial, right? So you got 100 people act on that ad. On, on that ad. They dial your phone number. They ring your, your, your law firm. Now, of the, those 100 calls, some of them are tire kickers. Some of them are just curious about whether you can solve their problem that has nothing to do with what you offer. And some of them are legitimate leads, right? So let's say that 50% of those are legitimate leads. So out of those 100 calls, you get 50 people who actually book a phone consultation with an attorney. Then of those 50, maybe 40 of them show up to their call. So you get it, you you lose 20% of the people, 80% show up to their call, you lose 20% at that next step. Now, the, those 40 people have that phone call with the attorney who gathers information and determines whether or not they're a good fit for the firm, whether or not uh, you actually can help them. And through that process, you now have filtered it further to say, hey, uh, only 20 of these people um, should actually come in and have a consult with us, right? So now you're at 50% at that stage where 20 people are, are left. And I'm not writing these numbers down. So I'm actually, uh, I'm not sure when we go back over it, if I'm going to hit the numbers correctly, but just bear with me because I'm, I'm just uh, um, throwing it out there. Uh, I am a, a a numbers person, like I visualize numbers, so hopefully I will I'll be able to repeat this as we go through it. Uh, but you have fifty percent of the people who actually book an in person consult. Well, now you've get maybe you get another twenty percent that don't show from those. So now you had twenty people, twenty percent didn't show. Sixteen people show up for the in person consult, and now let's say your close rate in the in person consult is fifty percent. Well, now you've got eight people that become clients. So you started with 100 people who picked up the phone and called your firm, and you end up with eight clients that come out the other side, right? So essentially, if we look at the big picture, your close rate from lead to close is 8%. Eight eight out of 100 people make it from the initial time they call your firm until they actually become clients. Now, whether the, those numbers are real in real life and whether they're good or bad is not the, the intent of this conversation. Every single law firm, every single practice area, every single uh, geographic area is different. You cannot uh, correlate your numbers from somebody else's numbers. You have to just assume that you, you are you're doing your your thing and your numbers are your numbers, right? You don't need to compare yourself to somebody else. The whole purpose of this entire conversation is to demonstrate to you the power of understanding your numbers. You see, the problem is, is that most law firm owners don't pay any attention to any of the numbers I just shared with you. And it's not that they don't under... It's not that they don't understand it. It's not that they don't... Um, recognize that maybe there's something there, but they don't even know what to look at, right? Um, And what happens is when you don't even know what to look at, you just ignore it. So you just kind of like assume that I'm going to make these efforts on the marketing side. They're going to make the phone ring and I'm going to go through this process and turn out clients on the other side. 
Now let me show you why paying attention to these numbers is so important. The hardest thing that you can do is to find the people to get your phone to ring. So getting those leads on the front end is extremely, extremely valuable, right? So if you spent, let's say you spent $5,000 on marketing this month and that got 100 people to ring your phone and then that turned into eight clients at the end, your cost per acquisition for each of those clients is $5,000 divided. Maybe I should have used easy numbers, right? Maybe I should have said $8,000. I'm actually going to pull open a calculator here and do this on air math, 5,000 divided by eight. So $625 per client was your cost per acquisition of those clients, right? Um, or uh, you can look at it differently and you can also say, well, we had 100 phone calls from our efforts, so it was $50 a lead, right? But $50 a lead, $625 to acquire a client. Now, your typical owner is going to, at, at, at best, use that final number. They're going to say, okay, I spent $5,000 on marketing. I generated eight clients. And let's say my average billing for those clients is, I don't know, 2500 or 5000 And it only cost me six twenty-five. dollars We're making money. We're good. We're going to continue this marketing effort, and we're just going to keep going on our merry way. Now, here's the thing you're getting 100 people to ring the phone. What if you were able to improve one metric along the way? What if at the very first stop, instead of 50% of people moving on to the next step of booking a call, what if you could get 70% of them to book the call? What that would do is, is that would mean you have another 20 people who get to the next step, which means that you have four of them don't show up, but another 16 you have a phone conversation with, right? Because we said that 20% didn't show and 80% of them had a phone call. Then we said that of those people that had the phone call, uh, I think we said 50% moved on. No, it was it was 20, yeah, 20 out of 40, right? So it was 50 percent moved on to the next step, right? So then you have seven more people, no, 16, 16, eight more people that move on to the in-person consult. Now, once again, you have 20% that don't show up. So you lose, and we can't get half people, right? So let's say you lose two people. So you have six pe six more people that show up to the to the sales conversation, which means you close three more clients. So all we did was we got Instead of 50 of those 100 to move on to the next step, we got 70 of those 100 to move on to the next step. We improved that from 50% to 70%, and that in turn meant three more clients on the, other, on, on the back end. Now, notice we didn't pay anything more for our marketing, right? It's the same $5,000. It's the same 100 phone calls coming in, yet we were able to generate three more clients. And if, if they're at 2,500 a client or 5,000 a client, that's 7,500 or $1,500, $15,000 that you generated for your law firm of revenue that essentially had no marketing cost. Or you could look at it differently and you could say, my $5,000 of marketing, instead of it being 625 per client, it's now 5,000 divided by 11, which is $454 per client, 455. So we essentially decreased our cost per acquisition by almost $200 by making one change. Now, when you start to map out the different steps and start to analyze the conversion rate of that step, it will start to show you where you need to focus your efforts. Because if we're losing 50% of the people at one of the steps, and at another step, we're only losing 20%, then we should probably focus on the 50% first to try to improve that number. There's more likelihood that we can improve that number. For example, if we're losing 
in the final sales conversation, we're only closing 50% of the people who come through the door. Well, maybe we need to put our thinking caps on and figure out how do I close more of these people? How do I, they're already pre-qualified. We already know that they need our service. So what are we doing wrong? Why can't we close more than 50% of these people in the sales conversation? And maybe you can figure out that we're not doing a good job of, of preparing them for the sales conversation. Maybe we're not doing a good job of letting them know what it's going to cost. Maybe we're not doing a good job of letting them know everything about our firm and all of our accolades and all of our testimonials beforehand. Maybe we're just doing a poor job of preparing them for that meeting so that they come in already planning to hire us and just a formality of going through the process of what is it that we're going to do and what is it that they need us to do. So at every step of the way, you can start to get really creative in what, what are things that we can do differently that will change this number. And once you start to look at the sales process with, through that lens and you start to analyze each of these numbers, you can then choose your area of focus. Where are we going to focus on next? Where are we going to focus on to improve our numbers? Because we have a tendency to think, I have a lead problem. I don't have enough people getting the phone to ring. Now, maybe some of you have that problem. That could be the case. You know, if your phone's not ringing, you have a lead problem. You need to find a way to get your phone to ring. You need to find a way to get leads in the door, right? So if you have a lead problem, then don't measure the rest of your sales process. You got to fix that problem first. But let's, let's assume that you have leads coming through the door. Once you have leads coming through the door and you can measure this, you can then start to get really strategic in fixing the steps along the way and, and fine-tuning the process so that you can maximize the potential of every lead that's coming through. And now you can start to do a better job of predicting the future of your firm. Because we're going to talk about, you know, the finances of your firm. We're going to talk about the numbers. But if you don't know what kind of revenue I'm going to generate next month, how could you potentially make decisions about whether to hire somebody or whether to buy a certain item? Well, if you don't, if you can't predict your future cash flow, then you're essentially shooting in the dark every single month. You just say, oh, this is the only money I have available. I can't do anything else with it. And that's what keeps people stuck. So many law firm owners have this conversation with me of, I desperately need help, but I can't hire somebody because I, I, I just don't know if I'm going to have the money next month to pay their, their, their payroll. And I don't want to hire somebody who I'm not going to be able to afford to pay next month. Why is it that you're not sure that you're going to be able to pay them next month? Why is there uncertainty in your sales process? Every single law firm needs to make sure that they have a sales system that is repeatable, that is predictable, that therefore you know you can count on this number of sales. Now, obviously, there's there's ebbs and flows, there's seasonality, there's some months that are better than others and some months that are worse than others. Yes, that's going to happen and you can't predict it perfectly. But if you are relying on maybe I'm going to get a referral or not, you know, maybe I'm going to get a family member or a friend that's going to need my services this month. If you're at that stage, then you are you're still in the in the early development stage of of your firm and and you really don't need to focus on these numbers right now you really need to focus on a, a system to bring in leads but assuming that you have a marketing effort marketing spend on the front end and you can predict with pretty good accuracy that you're going to have a certain number of leads coming in then we can start to pay attention to the, the sales conversion process. And instead of looking at the end result of what comes out of that process at the end, start to track it and break it down at every step of the way. I can tell you that for my clients who focus on these specific metrics, they suddenly start to realize that there's a number in, early on in the process that 
if they know that number has a direct result in them achieving their goals. So let's say your goal is to bring in 10 clients a month and you have, and you know that your process is going to produce 8% from, from your leads, right? So essentially if you have an 8% conversion, you take, and you need 10 clients, you take 10 divided by 0 0.08. And now you know that you need 125 leads to come in the door in order to make that happen. Assuming that you're not improving any metric along the way, you know your, you know your end result number. Now you know your front end number that you need. Now you have a early indicator. And that's where I wanted to get to with this podcast episode is now you have an early indicator to tell you whether you're going to hit your goals. If your goal is to have 10 new clients this month, you need 125 leads to come in to make that happen. Now we can get even more granular and we can say, okay, there's four weeks in the month. Take 125 divided by four. I need to have 30 leads come in a week. Maybe I divide that by five and say, I need to have six leads come in a day, six or seven leads a day. Well, now I know I need to have six or seven leads a day, or you could do it differently. You could say there's 20 days in the month, for example. You take 125 divided by 20. It should produce around the same result. Yep, same result, Six, six 6.25 leads a day. So obviously, you're going to have some days where you have no leads come in and some days where 12 or 15 leads come in if you're running at a lead rate of 125 leads a month. But you need to be tracking that regularly every day, once a week. And every week you need to be doing a check-in. How are we doing? Did we get 25% of our leads yet? If not, then we need to fix something. We need to figure out what's broken. We need to know why are these leads not coming in? What do we have to do differently? Maybe you need to increase your ad spend. Maybe you need to you know, run a few extra radio spots or, or, you know, run, run some extra, uh, add another couple of, of ad sets into your Facebook ads or increase the, 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 um, the a number that you're willing to spend on Google pay per click. But if you don't have this early indicator, if you're not monitoring this early indicator, what's going to happen is, is that at the end of the month, you get to the end of the month, you're like, Oh, we didn't get 10 clients. Oh, well, we only got seven. We're just going to have to figure out how to limp along with that lost revenue and move on to the next month. But a smart business owner pays attention to these numbers and doesn't just let this happen so that at the end of the month, suddenly we're not meeting our goals or we can't pay our bills, right? What if, you're, what if your entire profitability is those last three or four clients? And if you don't, if you miss the mark and you only get six instead of 10, you only generated enough revenue to pay your bills or worse, didn't generate enough revenue to even pay your bills. But let's just assume that six is enough to, to pay your bills, right? If you have 40% profitability, right? So your last four clients is your entire profit for the month. So essentially by not monitoring this number up front and doing something to change it, to fix it, you killed your profitability for the month. So when you start to see how these levers work in conjunction with each other, how these gears turn and need to be attached and connected, and they all relate to each other, that's when you can start to grow into the shoes of being a true business owner. And that's when you can start to understand the power of monitoring every single one of these metrics along the way. So there isn't a good or a bad conversion rate at any step of the, of the process. It's simply, what is my numbers? What have I historically been doing at this step? Go back, grab some data, grab you know, the last three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, two years, it doesn't matter. Just take some data that's meaningful and figure out where what your conversions are at each step. If you have a ton of people who are not showing up, then you've got to, you've got to figure out how to fix that problem. You got to give them an incentive to show up. Maybe you need to charge them to book the appointment so that that gives them the incentive to show up. 
maybe you need to just send them some stuff in the mail before so that they, you know, they they uh, have a, a greater affinity to your to your law firm. I mean, there's there, there's a ton of things. I mean, we could focus on every single one of these steps and come up with different strategies and, and ideas and plans of how to fix that that particular step and what the problem is. But the reality is, is that if you don't pay attention to the numbers, if you don't recognize the issue, then you can't fix the issue. And that's where it starts. So it starts with understanding your numbers, paying attention and knowing when something is off. So it might not be the leads, right? You, you might be right on track. You six leads a day. Boom. We're tracking six leads a day, every single day, day in, day out. The phone's ringing. We're getting our six leads, right? But our next conversion is 50%. That's happening too. Out of every six, three of them are booking their appointments. But normally, from our when we get our phone calls, 20% are no-shows. And all of a sudden this month, 40% are no-shows. Now, if we're not monitoring our metrics, we might be thinking, oh, great, we're tracking our leads. We're, you know, we're getting what we're supposed to. Our leads are good. We should, we should have no problem hitting those 10 clients at the end of the month. But because we had 40% instead of 20% of no-shows, all of a sudden at the end, we get to the end and we've got five clients instead of 10. How the heck did that happen? We had our 125 leads. Yeah, but you lost twice as many than you thought in the, somewhere along the way. So if you're not monitoring those metrics, you don't know something's broken. You don't know that there's a problem or that you need to increase the leads coming in. You know, if for whatever reason, the quality of the leads or the, the, you know, the season, you know, people are just not showing up for their phone calls and you can't figure out how to fix that. Well, fix it on the front end. Add more leads. You need to bring in another 25% leads in order to make, in order to make up for the people who are not showing up that you now can't count and are going to skew your numbers and going to force, cause you to miss your target of 10 clients a month. And obviously 10 clients a month is an example. All these numbers are examples. Your particular numbers are going to be specific to your firm. But the key is to take a, just take an Excel spreadsheet, take a piece of paper, whatever works for you, and map out every single step of the process and then start to pay attention to what is the conversion rate at that step. What is the percentage of people that are moving on to the next step that, that have basically completed that step? And that's how you pay attention to your sales numbers. And that's how you identify your early indicators. All of the numbers along the way in that funnel are early indicators of your financial numbers for the month because they all lead to how many clients am I going to get? Now, obviously, there's also how much are, are each of these clients paying? Uh, I, you know, in my example, I assume that every single client you get is the same amount of revenue. That's another thing that can change. You know, so that's, that, that also affects the calculation and affects the process. Uh, but you can start to, once you start playing around with this and you start looking at the numbers and you start paying attention to it, you'll learn pretty quickly what you need to pay attention to and what you don't need to pay attention to. So maybe you're able to average, you know, what your average case value is, or maybe you can identify different types of, of cases that you work on and you're going to split those up. So you're going to say, okay, uh, we've got, we had a hundred leads come in, but 30 of them are for wills and 70 of them are for trusts. So I know that I'm going to follow two separate paths for these 30% and these 70% as far as how they convert along the way. You know, wills, they're much, much less expensive. Maybe they convert much higher. Trusts are more expensive. Maybe they convert lower. Uh, maybe it has nothing to do with the cost. Maybe, you know, maybe trusts are people who are more uh, engaged and interested in, in getting their estate planning done. And, uh, you know, people look, you know, with, uh, with wills or they're just, they're just kind of like dipping their toe in the water and they're not very motivated to move forward. So maybe those convert at a lower rate. Uh, you have to look at your numbers and see what, you know, what your numbers are. Uh, but you got to find how to 
delineate the differences that are going to help you project the revenue at the end of the month. So it's not just how many clients am I creating, it's what is the value of those clients? Because ultimately this entire exercise is to be able to predict the sales number, the revenue number for your firm. Because if you can't predict the revenue number, you can't commit to expenses that you're not gonna be able to pay for. And in order to grow your firm, you're going to have to make commitments to expenses that you're going to have to pay for every month. Software expenses, employee expenses, uh, rent, you know, size of office, all of that stuff. It all plays into these numbers. It all plays into making sure that you have the revenue coming in. So hopefully this made a lot of sense to you. Hopefully I didn't lose you with all of my in the air, in the air, uh, like AIR in the in the air, but also in your ear, E-A-R, um, in the air math. So, uh, but, but as soon as you start to put this on paper, as soon as you start putting it into an Excel spreadsheet, it's all going to make a lot more sense for you. Uh, so I invite you to go and map this out and hopefully this was helpful for you. And I just want to remind you that we are I do personally, I do the law firm expansion free coaching session. Um, it's, I offer it to eight people a month for free. You get to spend 90 minutes with me. Um, trust me, my time is valuable, but I want to help you. And uh, all you got to do is go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, and you can book a free coaching session with me. Obviously, at the end of the call, if it makes sense, I'm going to pitch you on one of our one or more of our products that makes sense for you. But the actual coaching session is very impactful. I will help you get clarity on what might be holding you back from achieving the goals that you want. If you've been, if you're brand new, or if you've been doing this for 20 years and you haven't uh, been able to see the fruits of your labor the way you envisioned them from when you set out, uh, you know, or if you're brand new and and you uh, you want to shortcut your success and not spend many, many years trying to figure things out like other people do, uh, then you definitely want to take me up on this. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching, profitwithlaw.com forward slash free coaching. Book that call with me. I'm really looking forward to having that conversation with you. And I hope this was the beginning of a great conversation around sales and around your numbers. And we're going to continue this conversation next week. So enjoy your week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning into the Profit With Law podcast. Your feedback is extremely valuable to us as well as helping us reach more people with this valuable content. Please leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast directory. Join us again next time when we are back with even more strategies to profit with law.